God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. The title today for this conversation before we go home is the Overcomer's Strategy. In life, there is always strategies for overcoming strategies for success. Like I was saying earlier on, you have to use the right key to open the right door. If you're trying to use the wrong key to open the door, it's not going to work. So we must begin to learn the strategies of spiritual warfare, the strategies of success, the strategies of relating with heaven, the strategies of living a successful Christian life right here on earth. And as you read the scripture starting with 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3, it said, Therefore, thou therefore endure hardness as soldiers, as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. So I, I want to point us to that word soldier. I, I believe that Paul chose these words very carefully. The word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gave them utterance as they spoke. And here he said, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So what that says to me is that we are all soldiers of Jesus Christ. And I began to look at the meaning of the word soldier. And I discovered that the meaning of the word soldier in the Greek is the same root word strategy in English. The same root word strategy in English. So when the Greek person calls somebody a soldier, what that means to them is somebody who operates with strategy. You're not just beating the air, but you are strategic in what you do. And so Paul is reminding us that we are people who operate by and we strategy. And so Mark's gospel chapter 4 from verse 10. Bible says that when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him of the parable. Verse 11. And he said unto them, Jesus speaking. Unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without all these things are done imparable. So Jesus is declaring that Christians are given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God operating in the kingdom of God is dependent in the understanding of the mystery. Of the kingdom of God. So we live in a mysterious kingdom. That if I must succeed in this kingdom. I must understand the strategy of operating in this kingdom. Can use the same strategy out there to operate in the kingdom of God. He said for unto you it is given to know. The mystery of the kingdom of God. So three pieces i like to share with us today. Number one. For an overcomer to be successful and to truly be that overcome. Who operate in a strategic form. Or strategic way. Number one. He or she must find a strategic place. You have to be in a strategic place to conquer your enemies and your adversaries. In warfare, in traditional warfare, 
So it is always fine. A place of a strategic advantage. If you can find a strategic advantage over your enemies, they are more likely to defeat them. Your strategic advantage might be in the air because you dominate the air. Your strategic advantage may be in the sea because you dominate the sea. Your strategic advantage may be on land because you have a very strong and agile land fighting force. And so militaries have their own strategic advantage over other military powers. So as Christians, I need to begin to find myself a strategic place. God said, he that is planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of my God. So that is my strategic place. The tabernacle of God. The secret place of the Most High. He becomes my stronghold. He becomes my fortress. Ladies and gentlemen, what is a fortress? A fortress is a place of maximum security. Where the enemy cannot penetrate and reach you. God is our fortress. And now when you look at the scripture. In Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 22. The Bible says something here. He said, but ye are come unto Mount Zion, a place. There's always that strategic place where God wants to change somebody. Jacob in his journey, having stumbled into God in a place called Bethel, the house of God. And down the road, God reminded him, he said, return to Bethel, where I first Met you a strategic place. Often he would call Moses to mountain where the Lord was and became the mountain of God. A strategic place. Jesus talked about Christians in prayer entering into their closet. A strategic place. Not closet as we know it today but a place of prayer. And Jesus often, the Bible records uh, that only before dawn, he would move into the mountain to pray a strategic place. In Hebrews 12, 22, said, but ye are come unto Zion, unto the, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. In this strategic place, the Bible continues to record that to an innumerable companies of angels. Surrounded by angels. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn. A strategic place. Which are written in heaven to God, the judge of all. To the spirit of just men made perfect. And to Jesus the mediator. Of the new covenant. And to the blood of the sprinkling. That speak of better things. Than the blood of Abel. A strategic place. Exodus chapter 34 verse 2. And it says. And be ready in the morning. And come up in the morning. Unto Mount Sinai. And present thyself to me. In the top of the mount. A strategic place. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. Into the wilderness. To fast and pray for 40 days. And 40 nights. A strategic place. By the time he came out of there. He came in the power of the Holy Spirit. They brought to him everyone. Diseased, lame and dumb and all kind of people. The Bible says he healed them all and the fame of Jesus went round about the entire region. He came to a strategic place. By the time he came out, he came in power. So what I'm saying to us, for an overcomers who have a strategy must find 
a strategic place where God dwells. Not just said a place. I've said this to us before that God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. He's here. He's all over the world at the same time. He's in the heaven of heavens. His eternity is not bound by time. He is all over. He's omnipresent. But God manifests in seven places. There are seven places that God has ordained for his name. Where whenever you come in there, you feel the manifest presence of God. Yes, it's all over the place. But like I said, when Jacob was on his journey, lay down in a place, heaven opened, and he had an encounter with God, what we call Theophany. And then that moment he declared that I did not know that God dwells in this place. In other words, I didn't know that this is the house of God. It was a strategic place where God's presence is. And God chooses those places for himself. And you know it by a demonstrated presence of God. Not through the good speeches and eloquency of men. But the power of the spirit of God that changes the heart of men. And bring about interventions in the affairs of men. And you come into that place and say, wow, I know not that God is in this place. I must find that place where God dwells. By faith, Abraham went from place to place dwelling in caves. What was he looking for? He was looking for a city that has foundation. A city built by God. Moving from place to place in search of a strategic place. And my strategic place can be the watchtower. The watchtower at 11.30 p.m. Going into midnight. Where I find God. And my heart melts before me. In the presence of the most high God. God desires. Us to find. That place. Where he dwells. And his presence is copious. And we know it. That God's presence. Is there. And then number two. Is strategic prayer. Prayer is not just. Verbalizing and saying all kind of things. It has to be done very strategically. You hear the me's and hear the me's and hear the me's. But when you understand the strategy of prayer, you deliver your spiritual weapons with precise, with precision. It goes. And it goes precisely. And it comes with understanding the dynamics of the spirit. That we are spiritual beings. In, even though we live on this earth. But as Christians, our area of influence and sense of influence traverses this ephemeral world. This three dimensional world. And understanding that helps you to pray very strategically. And we see this in Jesus. When you read the book of Mark chapter 4. In there there's a story. But I just read for you verse 39. It said, and he arose, talking about Jesus, and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Strategic. And you all know this story. If you could be coming to church long enough. How Jesus said to his disciples. Let's go over to the other side. It was his idea. Let's go over to the other side. And them disciples got on the boat with him. And Jesus had laid and the boat sleeping and the disciples was up there. And then the wind and the wind began to rage. And for those who understand the context of that scripture. In chapter 5 when they got to the other side in the center. There was a spirit man who was waiting for Jesus' arrival. 
And at the, as a consequence of that man being saved, he had gone on to save 10 cities. So sometimes we focus on the wind and the wave and the water and the boat and the sleeping of Jesus. But we need to also understand that there was some energy that instigated this whole thing. It was not about Jordan's river. It's about praying strategically. Now, Jesus was in the boat. His disciples facing the wind and the wave were busy trying to fight the wave. It was not their fault because that's all they could see. But the Bible says that we do not look at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Because the things that are seen are temporal. But those things that are unseen are internal. Therefore, Christians don't look at the things that are seen, they look at the things that are unseen. The wind is unseen, but the wave is seen. So the disciples, because they were not strategic in their prayer, were looking at the physical things that they could see, which was the wave of the ocean. And the tossing back and forth of the boat. These are things that they could see. These are things that they could experience. And then they call on Jesus and said, Tell us not that we perish. And Jesus got up. And Jesus rebuke what? The wind that's not seen. Not the wave. Because Jesus knew that it got nothing to do with the wave. If I can stop the wind, the wave will stop. Some of us Christians, we are so focused on the wave. On the boat. On the tossing back and forth. In the rocking back and forth. That's what we are preoccupied on. But we might just need to take a minute. And know that a man possessed of demonic powers. It's on the other side. And by the influence of that demonic spirit. Is instigating the wind against the boat. And so I need to be strategic in my spirit now. To look beyond the wind, uh, to look beyond the wave and the boat, and to begin to think, Holy Spirit, what is it that is causing this to happen? I can feel something, but I know that this is not normal. It is coming from somewhere. What is the root of it? And the Holy Spirit begin to download uh, some information into your hard drive. And you're, wow, Lord, I know now why this is. And I begin to stop the wind. And so when Jesus came up, the Bible said what? He rebuked the wind. Learn to rebuke the wind and not fight the wave. Rebuke the wind instead of fighting the wave. Strategic prayer. When you're coming into a place of prayer, don't just go through the emotions. Be in a state of spiritual alert. Have your spiritual antenna very way high up. Scan the spirit. Do a quick scan. Where am I? Where am I? What's going on around me? What is this? What manner of salutation is this? What manner of man is this? You know, most of us, we come into uh, a prayer meeting, we jump right in, everybody's prayer, we jump right in. Without taking a moment, to say, Lord, uh, what, 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 what you got? Lord, what do you want to do today? Lord, how is this place? And the Holy Spirit starts to speak to you and, and, and minister to you even before you begin 
to pray. I discovered that it saves a lot of time when you plan in advance. And the time of planning sometimes does not take much. It could be five minutes of scanning through and juggling the files in your memory bank and arriving at a plan prior to execution. It saves you a lot of time. And some of us have been fighting wave for so long. I'm saying to you, find the wind. And if you can say to the wind, peace be still, just like Jesus said, then you calm the wave. After the wind was still, the wave stopped. Strategic power. And number three, Strategic partnership. You gotta find a strategic place. You gotta find your strategic pride. And you gotta find your strategic partnership. Because this, this world in our human race was not made to be alone and work in isolation. Every day we build this partnership with the Holy Spirit, with God the Father, with God the Son, and with the folks around us. And the Bible says in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Can two walk together? It says, Except they be agreed. My partnership has to be a strategic partnership. And some of us might have made some partnership that have not helped advance your spirituality and your prayer life and your Bible still life and bringing you into the presence of God. You might need to dissolve those partnerships and build new ones. In Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20, it says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a company of fools shall be destroyed. Can't be with folks who are not going to the same place you're going to. Said that many times. Can't be with folks who don't pray like you pray. Can't be with folks who worship like you worship. Can't be with them. Can't build partnership with them. That's what I'm saying. Can't build partnership with folks who are not going the same direction like you're going. If you believe God that this year is your year of miracle, you need to find folk who believe the same thing. That this year is the year of miracle. So both of you can encourage yourself together. Can't be with folk who feel that God doesn't make miracles no more. Because that's going to kill your faith right there. Ain't no need to fight it. Oh, you don't believe that there's miracle. I believe that God is a miracle worker. It's a promise keeper. I believe. And I want to stand on the promises of God. And build the strategic partnership. As I move into the future. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 7 says. Go from the presence of a foolish man. When thou perceived not in him. The leaps of knowledge. That's scripture. When you perceive that he does not believe in faith. For the just shall live by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. But he or she does not believe that that is real. Can be a partnership with you now. Because I need my strategic partnership. That help me to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, well, you know, we're prayer partners from a long time ago. Yes, that's a long time ago. That was before. This is now. There's a lot at stake, ladies and gentlemen. Matthew chapter 18, from verse 18, it says, Verily I say unto you, whosoever, whatsoever ye shall bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
And in verse 19, again I say unto you, if, 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 conditional clause, if, conditional clause, if, conditional clause, didn't say when, if, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. This is a spiritual principle. This is the this is the message of the Lord. This is Jesus Christ talking. There's no one who will say it any better than Christ Himself. These are the exact words of Jesus. He said here, verse 19, again, it says, I said it before, again I say unto you. If you build the right partnership and you pray together concerning anything that they ask. That's what he said. Anything. He said it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven. Our dear friend Reverend Oyo, he likes this. This scripture. And he, ha he likes another translation of this scripture. That if two people shall agree together concerning a thing and make a prayer of it, he said, God will go into action. <laughs> so if you want God to go into action in this year, build a strategic partnership with folks who believe in the same God that you believe. Who believe in the same revelation that you believe. Who believe in the same word that you believe. Who believe in the same promise of God. Who believe in the same destination that we're going. Who believe in the power of God. To bring to pass the will of God. Build the strong partnership. In place of pride. So what am I talking about this morning? This an overcoming strategy. Overcoming strategy. And I only gave us three today. There's more. A strategic place. The house of God. Bethel. Where the power of God dwells. Where God manifests himself. God is everywhere. But God manifests himself in certain locations, in certain places. Find a way to enhance your prayer life. Where you are praying strategically. Not just going through the motions of prayer. Of our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That may not be relevant for every occasion. If all I say is the Lord's prayer. It was good for the time. The Lord's prayer wouldn't cast out devils right there. If you're confronted with demonic spirit. Because you need to be able to say. You power of devil. I commend you in the name of Jesus. Get out of him. Give us this day our daily bread. Would not do that. Strategic prayer. And we need to build that strategic partnership. Of folks who understand spirituality and the move of God and how God worked through His Word. And as we begin to exercise these basic principles, you start to find result again. You start to see God move again. And we are not fighting waves, we are seizing the wind. Command it to cease. And there will be peace. And there will be stillness. Bow your heads. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father we are so grateful. We are so grateful that you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. You have called us your own beloved. And Father have brought us into this brotherhood. And Father God we just thank you. Thank you for your word. I pray today God Almighty. 
that as we depart from this place, that these words will not depart from us. That we will be strategists from this day onward in the name of Jesus Christ. And God using the power of God when it counts the most in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we bless your name. Father, we exalt you. Let your presence be with us throughout this day. Thank you, God. Oh, may your name be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401 954 6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.